Well, here it comes to my question. How do I remain unified within myself and with others when I am obtaining all of these objectives? Well, the Lord has the answer. He always does. The answer is always sheltered within his word. So although you hear our messages, it is imperative that we do everything that he commands us. So here are some commands on remaining unified within the context of everyday living. James 1, 19, 20. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man that intense anger does not produce the righteousness of God. So ladies, watch over the areas of your life where you are easily offended. Give it a moment. Look at it closely to see if there's something good in it, worthy of consideration before you react and before you get others involved in your offense. Intense anger over a word spoken to you, about you that hurts your feelings, can bring about instant division. Then arises the need for a mediator, someone to get between you and your offense and the offender. And we must not give the enemy any room to divide us, separate us from one another. Proverbs 13, 3 says, He who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who open wise his lips shall have destruction. We must know just how powerful our words are, whether they are harsh words or gentle words, because once they're out of the mouth, we can't take them back, and we all know that's true. That is why Solomon says in Proverbs 15, 1 and 2, A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly, but the mouth of fools pours forth foolishness. Our words, ladies, our words can be weapons in Satan's hands. Ill-spoken words from our lips into the hearts of someone else that hurts them are arrows from Satan's quiver. We must be intentional about stopping Satan from dividing us. Now, the whole weekend we've been hearing about Nehemiah, and I love Nehemiah. So I'm going to recap a little bit, but I'm going to come from a different angle. Yes, Nehemiah received favor from the Persian king to return to Israel to rebuild the walls and unify the people, and he did it in 52 days. But whenever anyone, you or I or Nehemiah or anyone else, stands up to do anything for the Lord, opposition always stands up to stop it. And as with Nehemiah, Three nefarious men, Sanballat, Tobias, and Geshem the Arab, schemed to stop his work. These jealous men talked badly about Nehemiah. They threatened him. They insulted him. They sent letters to the king to discredit him. But through it all, Nehemiah kept the people together, stayed on mission, prayed, committed to finishing the work. Now, how did he do that? Well, this is what he didn't do. He didn't go to war with his offenders. He didn't insult them. He didn't speak badly about them like they had spoken about him. Instead, Nehemiah prayed, strengthen my hands. Remember Tobiah and Sambalat, my God, because of what they have done. He took the opposition to the Lord. Listen, ladies, take your offenses to the Lord first, then do what he tells you. Okay, Miss Lawada, what does he tell us to do? Well, the Lord tells us what to do in Matthew 5, 9, in the Beatitudes. Blessed are the peacemakers, but they will be called children of God. And he tells us in Matthew 5, 23, 24, leave your gift at the altar, go make peace, then come and bring your gift to the altar. Now, I think Paul says it best in Romans 12, 18, if it is possible as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. So today I offer you 11 ways to remain unified in everyday living. Simply stated, may not be so simple to do, but it's a command. Remain unified by carefully spoken words. Remain unified by being slow to be offended. 
Remain unified by submitting your will to God's will. Remain unified by giving yourself to God's word day and night. Remain unified by interceding earnestly for your adversary. Remain unified by taking every offense to the Lord. Remain unified by keeping conversations confidential. Remain unified by being thankful for every favor shown to you. Remain unified by withholding judgment until you know the whole matter. Remain unified by loving genuinely. Remain unified by being a faithful watchwoman of your section of the wall. In other words, remain unified in your crew, in your small group, with your peers, your coworkers, your family, your church. But we are commanded to endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace, Ephesians 4 and 3. Now, I want to thank NCC for the wonderful, wonderful sisterhood weekend. I thank you for Cruz. I thank you for our sisterhood's occasional meetings at the South Campus. More than any year, I've needed you, and my sisters have come through and held me up, and you know why. So I'd like to encourage you and build you up with this benediction prayer from Numbers 4, 6, 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you, my ladies. The Lord make his face shine upon you, my sisters, and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom.